we're going to start by looking at Tuesday's independent practice assignment. Many of you guys completed it in Mastery Connect on Tuesday, and then um, you'll be given a new one today. If you were unable to complete it, you may not complete it after today. Now, this is Tuesday's assignment because at this time, I'm going to be going over the best answers. Okay, so I'm thinking about the directions. As my screen updates, you're going to see what that independent assignment looks like. If you've already completed it, you already um, have done it. So I want to make sure just to remind you about what you read about and what strategies you should have used. So this was the text called Facts About Contagious Yawns. And it gives four points of giving facts about those contagious yawns. And then it also gives another subheading, another bold word, called It's Contagious. After reading it, it gave you some questions to answer. So the first question says, what fact is included in both of the texts? It's Contagious and Facts About Contagious Yawns. So on Tuesday, we thought about what information is found in both texts. This is called integrating information or synthesizing information. So right now, I would like for you guys to use your chat bar to solve it. That means when you hear the code word, you're going to click in the answer to them number one. And if you didn't solve it by yourself, you're going to solve it now. So please take the time to read the answer choices. I'm going to give you about two minutes. And then you will use the chat feature to click what you think the strongest answer is. No one needs to click in until they hear our code word. I'm giving everyone three minutes, so you won't hear anything for the next three minutes. I can see by your responses that many of us, when we solve this independent practice, chose A, contagious yawning begins in children around four years old. This fact is included in both. So A is the strongest answer. Let's look at number two. What are the author's purposes in both of the text? I'm going to give you about one minute and then you'll hear my code word. Looking at our answers, I can see a lot of us chose B on number two. B is the strongest answer. All right, let's go ahead and look at number three. What point is made about contagious yawns in both of the texts? So we're looking for information found in both. Listen for my code word. I'm noticing a lot of us chose B. Humans and chimpanzees have been known to show contagious yawning. B is the strongest answer. Good work on number three. Look at number four. What paragraph from It's Contagious best matches with point two from facts about contagious yawns. So since you guys do not have the text in front of you, I want you to know that the best answer to number four is B. And many people chose this by going back to the text when they solved it independently. So in paragraph two, we found information that best matches point two. Okay, let's now look at number five. What fact is included in the piece? It's contagious, but not included in the piece Facts about contagious yawns. So since you guys are unable to go back to the text on this one, I want you to know that the best answer is D. When yawning, the jaw is stretched, boosting the blood circulation to the brain. And many of you guys chose D as you solved this one independently. Good job reviewing the best answers to our independent practice from Tuesday. Let's go ahead and look at what we're doing today. Thinking about our focus for today, I would like for you to fill in the blank. My screen is updating so that you can see what we're doing today as we think about learning. Please use the chat bar to fill in my blank, and I'm going to give my screen just a moment so that you can see what I see. So as we think about our focus today, I can see that we are still focused on integrating information from two texts. And many of you guys helped me fill in the blank with the word information. So that's our focus for today. In your interactive notebook, you have notes that look a lot like what you see on my screen. 
Notes about how growing readers pair information from texts that have similar topics. I want to remind you to continue studying notes like this as you think about solving your independent practice after our lesson today. So today we're going to pick up with a text that's called A Short History of Easter Island. And I thought this was a pretty appropriate title since Sunday we have an important day and that day is Easter. So as we're reading, I'm going to ask you to use the chat bar to fill in my blank, which means that you need to stay with me to know what you need to type. Here we go. The Short History of Easter Island by Monique Jenkins. Before we begin reading, I want you to notice a couple of text features. So I'm noticing that I have a text feature that kind of looks like a 3D map. It's a sphere. And I'm noticing the equator. I'm noticing North America, which is where we live, way at the top. South America and underneath the equator is where we have Easter Island. So this is not found in North America, which means my background knowledge might be a little bit more limited, my schema. So I'm going to have to depend on those text features a little bit more when I'm thinking about reading for understanding. Okay, so now that we've looked at that text feature, I also see one at the bottom. And I'm noticing this one at the bottom that kind of looks like statues. So as I'm reading the text, I might find out more about that information. Fill in my blank. Paragraph 1. Easter Island is one of the most remote inhabited islands in the blank. It is in the Pacific Ocean, about 3,780 kilometers west of South America. It was formed by three blank, which are now extinct. As far as inhibited islands go, Easter Island is quite small. It measures just 101 square kilometers, which is the size of San Francisco. And thank you for filling in my blank. Paragraph 2. Scientists believe that the island was settled between 1,200 and 1,600 years ago by Polynesians. They called the island Rapa Nui. These first inhabitants, called the Rapunio, flourished. Scientists believe that as many as 7,000 people once lived on the tiny blank. The earliest inhabitants moved tons of volcanic rock and used it to carve the enormous statues that look out over the island's landscape. Good job. So I'm noticing I already have more information that the author has given me about these um, images I see. I'm noticing it tells me that these pictures at the bottom are statues that look out over the island's landscape. This is important in understanding the text. So I've learned so far that it's a tiny island, very small. It's located somewhat close to South America, and I've learned more about these text features. And if you can see my screen, you can see where I've highlighted a quote to support more information about these statues. Paragraph 3, and my screen is updating for you to be able to see what I'm reading. Paragraph 3. Rapa Nui remained isolated from other humans for hundreds of blank. Then, in 1722, a Dutch captain, Jacob Rigavon, discovered it. His ship arrived on Easter Sunday, so he named the island Easter Island. He estimated that 2,000 to 3,000 people lived there. Fifty-two years later, Captain James Cook came to Easter Island. He counted about six he counted about six hundred people living in misery. Clearly, something had gone terribly blank. Beginning in eighteen sixty four, Christian missionaries arrived on the island. They found a society whose members were constantly at war with each other. The population on Easter Island continued to decline. So I'm thinking about what the word decline means, and I'm noticing there's some clues that can help me. So if they are constantly at war with each other, 
I know that often with war comes death. So this leads me to believe that maybe decline might mean to go down. This is a context clue that can help me. Let's keep pick up with paragraph four. Finally, the South American country, Chile, laid claim to Easter Island. In 1966, the island was made open to tourists. Finally, in 1995, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This means that governments around the world help to protect the island so that future generations of people can visit and enjoy it. Today, Easter Island has about 4,000 inhabitants. Some of them are descended from the Rapa Nui people. So one thing I found interesting is that it has such a pleasant name. So it Easter Island sounds like it would be such a beautiful, pleasant place, happy place. But the text revealed that is not true, that there was a lot of war, a lot of unhappiness. The people weren't thriving after a certain amount of time. And then you can see another image underneath the text. Um, and that image is showing more about those statues that overlooked the island. Now we're going to look at a second text. And as my screen updates, soon you'll be able to see that the title of that second text is called Easter Island's Decline by Eric Lelham. Well, I'm thinking based on that title that it might tell me more about why the island was in such a decline. So it might add to my knowledge of the topic, Easter Island, and what happened. It also might help me understand more to be able to integrate information, which is our focus this week. Before we continue the next text, I'm noticing that Ms. Hobson has been able to join us. So I'm going to give her a moment to say hello and, and maybe share anything that she might have, have for us today. Easter Island's Decline. Fill in my blank, starting with paragraph one. More than 1,000 years ago, a civilization thrived on Easter Island. The island's rich soil yielded harvest of sweet potatoes, and the inhabitants, called the Rapanu, ate chickens they raised. The Rapanu had a lot of spare time, and they used it to carve huge stone blank called Moha. The average Moha was four meters tall. The larger ones measured more than 30 meters tall and weighed 80 tons. The island boasts 600 of these mysterious figures. Okay, so I'm already thinking about how this text has given me more information about these huge stone statues. That's part of integrating information, and I see several of you type the word statue in the chat bar. Good job. Let's look at paragraph two now. Keep filling in my blank as we're reading. Part of the mystery is how these people move the statues around the island. Sixty years ago, a man named Thor Herendal sought to explain it. He did an experiment and showed how people could have placed the statues on huge logs. Then they rolled the heavy weights long distances atop the logs. He proved this process would have blank. Good, I'm noticing some people are typing the word worked. So this is how paragraph two is all about how he moved those statues. Let's keep reading about that in paragraph three. Logs come from trees, but the Easter Island of today is almost completely treeless. Where did the trees go? Scientists concluded that the Rapanu cut down most of the trees and used them to move the statues, and the forest disappeared. So did the soil. Without trees on the island to prevent erosion, rainwater washed away the fertile earth, destroying the farmland. With fewer crops, people became hungry and fought over the food that was available. The island's population plummeted from a peak of 7,000 to just a few hundred. 
I'm noticing this word plummeted. And as I'm thinking about that word plummeted, I'm thinking since the context clues around it say that they went from 7,000 to just a few hundred, plummeted, the population must have drastically gone down. Hmm. This tells me more about why the island wasn't thriving. Good. Let's keep going, looking at paragraph four. Also, as we're reading, make sure you look at that text feature. Today, Easter Island is still treeless, but its population has grown. Now the people who live there welcome tourists who visit the grand statues and spend money. Ironically, the statues that blank led to Easter Island's fall are now helping to heal it. So as I'm thinking about the main idea and what's important, I'm thinking about how the reason that the um, island declined is because they used all of the trees to move these huge statues. And when they used the trees, it destroyed the fertile soil. Without soil, they could not grow um, their agriculture went down. They couldn't feed the people, so their population declined. Well, then it tells me at the end of the text that these massive statues are now bringing in people that are spending money, and that money is going back into the economy. So it's ironic that the same statues that destroyed the island years ago are now what is allowing the island to thrive and live. So the text also added to my knowledge about how it was not doing well and now it is doing well. So this text is mostly about the statues. I'm synthesizing that information. Another word for synthesizing is integrating. I'm adding to my knowledge. So now I'm going to think about some questions that I can answer. And the right side of my text shows you everything we've read. We're going to need those texts as we think about answering some questions. So I'm going to start by looking at question one. On your screen, you can see it says, read these sentences from a short history of Easter Island. So I'm going to highlight where I am so that you can see what I'm reading. I'm highlighting that in gray for you. 50 years later, Captain James Cook came to Easter Island. He counted about 600 people living in misery. Clearly, something had gone terribly wrong. So in just a moment, you're going to hear my code word for the week. And remember, that word is Easter, but please do not answer until you hear that word. And you're going to be trying to answer this question. Which statement best explains the misery Captain Cook found? A. Thor Herendale showed how the statues were moved. B. The volcanic rock made the soil bad for farming. C. The Ravenu ruined farmland by cutting down trees. D. The population declined to just a few hundred people. Think, but don't answer until you hear me say the code word, and then you'll type your answer in the chat bar. In order to solve number one correctly, we have to think about what the text told us. I want you to know the best answer, and many of you guys chose this as the strongest answer. The best answer to this one is C. C says that the farmland was ruined because of the cutting down of trees, and a lot of us chose that as the best answer. Good. Let's now look at number two. Now, number two asks us to underline. It says, underline one word in the excerpt from Easter Island's decline that means to fall quickly. And then it gives us an excerpt. I want you to find that word and I want you to type it. Listen for the code word so no one knows your answer yet. Rainwater washed away the fertile earth, destroying the farmland. With fewer crops, people became hungry and fought over the food that was available. The island's population plummeted from a peak of 7,000 to just a few hundred. So we're looking at what I've read, and we're looking for the one word that shows to fall quickly. And we talked about this one when I was modeling. 
Listen for the code word. That if you were underlining, which you guys typed in the chat bar, but if you were underlining like the directions say, you would have underlined the word plummeted. Good. Now let's look at number three. The timeline below shows some events described in A Short History of Easter Island. Write two details from Easter Island's decline to complete the timeline. So we're going to use this text, Easter Island's decline, and our thinking map. Let's go ahead and look at what it's asking. I'm noticing it says the island is first settled. Hmm. And now it's asking me to give something in the second box. The third box says James Cook visits in 1771. And then the last box gives me more a uh, spot to write new information. So since this uh, question is asking me to complete the timeline, I'm looking for what came after the island is first settled. So I'm going to give everyone a moment to type their answer in their chat bar. Uh, Alicia, we will not be meeting tomorrow. For the rest of the class, I'll let you know why at the end of class, but I want her to know since she's leaving because it's Good Friday. For the rest of us, let's go ahead and get our answer ready. So I'm asking what would go in the second box. You'll need to use the text to help you with that. And type it in your chat bar. And then listen for the code word. So after the island is first settled, they cut down all the trees so that they can move the statues. Remember, we're going to stay in our circle and model the social contract. Part of that means I'm not going to talk about others, even in the chat bar. Good. And uh, Sam, I'm noticing that you typed that answer as well. Good job. Okay. So now I'm thinking about what happened next. And as I'm thinking about what happened next, the graphic organizer says, James Cook visits in 1771. So we're looking for what came after James Cook visited in 1771. Get your answer ready in the chat bar, but please do not click enter to submit it until you hear my code word. I'm going to give you about two minutes to look at the text and find the answer. So now we see that Thor Herdahl did an experiment showing how they were able to move the statues. This is what happened after. And remember, we're only supposed to be using details from Easter Island's decline. Reread paragraph 4 from A Short History of Easter Island. Which two sentences from Easter Island's decline Best explain how becoming a World Heritage Site affected the people of Easter Island. Uh oh, so this one's pretty challenging because we're having to use information from both texts. We're integrating it and thinking about what's important. So the first part of it tells me I need paragraph 4 from Easter Island's Decline. I'm sorry, paragraph 4 from A Short History of Easter Island. So I'm zooming in on that for you. And then it also says which two sentences from Easter Island's decline best explain how becoming a World Heritage Site affected the people of Easter Island. So let's start by going back to paragraph 4 of A Short History of Easter Island. I'm going to highlight that for you. And I'm looking for, I need to reread it first. That's what my directions tell me. Finally, the South American country, Chile, laid claim to Easter Island. In 1966, the island was made open to tourists. Finally, in 1995, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
This means that governments around the world help to protect the island so that future generations of people can visit and enjoy it. Today, Easter Island has about 4,000 inhabitants. Some of them are descended from the Rapa Nui people. So now that I've reread it, it asks me which two sentences from Easter Island's decline best explain how becoming a World Heritage Site affected the people of Easter Island. So I'm going to give you guys just a moment. You will click to in to, once again, to, but not until you hear me say the code word. I'm not talking at this time. I'm giving you think time. Marley, I'm noticing that you're saying you're exiting. I want you to know that we'll not be meeting tomorrow due to Easter. It is Good Friday. But we will meet Tuesday. All right. So we're typing two answers in in about 30 seconds. Twenty. Ready in five. Ready in four. Ready in three, two, Easter. So Wes, I have one answer, but the question asked me for two. So go ahead and give me your second answer as well. I'm noticing that Kai said, and Amy, and Zyra, and several people now say D and E, and D and E are the best two answers. These are the two sentences that best explain how becoming a World Heritage Site affected the people of Easter Island. D says, now the people who live there are welcome tourists who visit the grand statues and spend money. And E, ironically, the statues that indirectly led to Easter Island's fall are now helping to heal it. Both of these tell how making it a World Heritage Site helped or affected the people of Easter Island. Next, you're going to see a writing prompt. I want you to think with me about what kind of prompt is it? What kind of prompt is it? Is it Oreo? Is it narrative? Or is it racist? Please do not answer until you hear the code word. So here's the prompt. Easter Island went through great changes between Jacob Roggeveen's visit in 1772 and 1966 when tourists began to visit. Combine information from both passages to explain a possible cause of one change. So think with me. Does that sound like Oreo, which is opinion writing? Does that sound like narrative or does that sound like racist? If you think you know, go ahead and type it in the chat bar in five, four, Easter in three, two, and one, Easter. I'm noticing a lot of people are saying races. I want you to know the best answer is races. This prompt is asking me for information. Good job. As we think about learning today, I want to take the time to explain a couple of things as we wrap it up with our virtual learning session. I want you guys to know that you do have an independent practice assignment, and I'm going to hopefully... Today's independent practice, when you click in Google Classroom, you'll notice it says 4, 9 of 20, Thursday's independent practice, which is today's date. 
you'll click on that assignment that says Thursday's Independent Practice. And once you click on it, you'll see that code. It is labeled with the name Thursday. And I'm noticing that my screen is delayed. I do know a couple of people already completed that assignment. As my screen updates, I want you to know that the expectation is for you to do this today. If you haven't done it already, which a couple of people have, um, I prefer that you wait until after the meet, but if you did it before, that's okay. So this is what your independent practice assignment looks like in Google Classroom. My screen is working, and you'll do that today. It is expected. And then I also want you to know some important information that you've heard me mention several times. Um, tomorrow is Good Friday. So because it is Good Friday, we will not have our regular Friday meeting. But you are expected to do the independent practice um, today for today's assignment. And I want you to know that I hope you have a wonderful Easter. I realize this year is very different than what you're probably used to doing. But I do want you to know for me and my family, we're going to do our best to um, celebrate Easter in a way that we can here from our house.